So once again, hello, beautiful friends, guardians of Mother Earth, who is ascending, and we are ascending with her. We just completed our beautiful 11-11 event, where I think by now 17,000 people have participated online in the recording, which is very powerful, and it's changing the world and keeps changing the world. And so where we left off is 11-11. And me and my husband, we went to Gibraltar in Europe and we spent 11-11 in the beautiful cave of Archangel Michael. And so I was going to start actually today's event with that two-minute video of the cave itself. Now, <clears throat> what happened on 11-11, and I know that so many psychics these days and everybody who's seeing this ascension process are seeing the changes in the electromagnetic field of the earth. And it really is what is happening. And so... I wanted to put up this picture that we created with a friend of mine many years ago when I was starting to see what's going to happen to planet Earth. And that's why today I will be speaking about the ascension process. So the ascension process truly is a planetary ascension. So we will go into the detail of it. And many of you anyway know everything already. But I just want to say, first of all, that the big picture is a picture that all of us are meant to come together to put together to bring our puzzle pieces so what i will be sharing today is just my my little puzzle puzzle piece and so it's not about being right or wrong it's just about this is what my multi-dimensional self has brought into this world so i'll try to share that and then hopefully it helps every other puzzle piece to kind of create a big picture together so it is really about oneness and togetherness and that's why we actually have the responsibility to share whatever our multidimensional self, our beautiful divine self is bringing into this world so that everybody else can remember and also feel empowered and ignited. So, you know, since I entered this world as a child, I started to have constant information flowing through me and out of body experiences all about this planetary ascension. I didn't have a name for it, of course, you know, as a kid. But I remember exactly what I was seeing, what I was experiencing, and how I knew that something <laughs> in this lifetime will be about a planet. And I wasn't quite sure if this planet or some other planet, but I knew as a kid, you know, that we have to be part of this beautiful process, which I would say is loving life, loving the world, loving cosmic consciousness, and loving all life. And so... This year on 11-11, we were invited to create this beautiful event with Patricia Coda Robles, and she guided this beautiful, um, really, activity of light where so many of us participated. And so we ended up in Gibraltar in the cave of Archangel Michael. Today, it's called the cave of Archangel Michael because it has this beautiful kind of, uh, you know, structure that when you illuminate it, which is what they do, you know, they do the light show. Then you kind of see kind of a big figure of an archangel and it looks, you know, like he's got wings or she's got wings. But originally, uh, it was also called the Temple of Hercules. And I'm going to pronounce it, you know, the way that it would be pronounced in cosmic realms, Hercules. And we, of course, of course, know Hercules as Hercules. And so why this is so important, it is because Hercules is a word that actually is a cosmic word. And so when you are in higher realms and you are having experiences that I would call, you know, your more authentic self, where you understand much more and know much more, you will hear that the original blueprint for a human being was actually a blueprint which had a name and the name in cosmic realms was Hercules. Now, this will be important to us because this ascension process it's all about becoming once again a Hercules and not exactly, you know, Hercules with those big muscles and doing, you know, the 12 labors, but it's actually about expanding. Sorry, I need some tea. Expanding into the 12 dimensional being that we are. And maybe not exactly 12 dimensional, but a being who has 12 layers. So we were so used to operating from the first three levels of our physicality our mind and our emotion and now we are actually as we are ascending on this beautiful planet the blueprint is changing to the change that is called the hercules blueprint with the 12 dimensions of our own being so it's kind of fun so i'm going to take you back into the cave and it was so incredible if you have been in the cave then you know how magnificent it is 
this cave in Gibraltar, which kind of faces Africa, also has a twin cave. And the twin cave is in Africa, and it is in what today we call Morocco. And so you can go to that cave in Morocco as, as well as in Gibraltar. And of course, the myth, the story says that once upon a time, these caves were connected. And that, of course, the Strait of Gibraltar is a big portal. And we know that Atlantis, for example, uh, was part of that area. So there is a lot of mystery in that cave. So that cave alone was very, very activating and incredibly beautiful. And so just to start with a little bit of beautiful visuals, we'll go back into the cave and to have this heart opening experience with these beautiful lights and the beautiful shapes. I'll just switch back to the presentation. <clears throat> hmm. So a hard opening experience in the cave. And that's what this ascension process really is about. And I'm not going to be really looking into the chat, but for those of you who have been working with us for a long time, please be so kind and manage the chat and answer any questions. And I'm going to go into the presentation. So once again, you know, in this lifetime, this lifetime is different from anything else we have done before. And so when I came into this lifetime as a child, I started to have these out-of-body experiences that always took me into a different world and different worlds and different beings. And everything was more about the rainbow beings. But I knew that a world can be destroyed by, by, by unconsciousness. And so that was like a very important message I received from this childhood. And then, you know, life unfolded and I was about four years old when I started to get visitations from beautiful guides that today we would call in this world, the Hopi people of Arizona. But when they came to me, they were much more than Hopi people of Arizona. And yet they were called the Hopi people. They were star beings who didn't even reside on this planet. They resided at what they, what they called the real divine reality. 
And so they started to give me instructions about this lifetime and what we need to do. And one of the really important messages that I received from my grandmother, who was a Hopi grandmother, the star elder, she actually shared with me that in this lifetime, we will go through a really breakthrough process. And that a big part of this process will be actually love. And it was not just like, I love you and I love nature and I love this and I love that. It was more about this explosion of love within our hearts that would actually show us the true divine reality. It was almost as if that explosion in the heart was like a nuclear explosion, but in the most wonderful way. And that it would move through the body, move through this reality. And suddenly the true divine reality would be unveiled to us. And it would be a reality beyond what we call matter. And that in this experience that was, and, you know, I was four years old when I experienced it. So as uh, you know, I didn't have the words to explain it to myself, which maybe is good. And so I realized that when this happens, we will truly know who we are and that matter does not dictate our lives but that we actually dictate matter and way beyond matter and so it was kind of like consciousness and love will change this world and so you know since that time basically you know my guides have been telling me a lot of things about this world and one of the things that i got to see was our beloved divine mother and so when I have these multidimensional experiences, the way that they happen is always through deepest, deepest, deepest meditation for, you know, thousands of hours. And then suddenly there is a breakthrough experience, which is beyond what we would call, you know, visualization or imagination or even like consciousness with closed eyes. It happens as encounters. So just like you and me, let's say we would meet and we would stand in front of each other. So that's the way that this happens. And so in 2017, Divine Mother came and she started to instruct really us on how to move through this process that is taking place on this planet. And so one of the things that I would say that ascension is actually the return of our cosmic consciousness through the return of the cosmic mother. When I first met Divine Mother, I started to call her Divine Mother. And she said, you know, not everybody will respond to that in a positive way. Why don't you just call me life with a capital L, the cosmic life, the life that always has been, always will be, the life that creates cosmos. And so, you know, we kind of played with the idea. But the thing is that we also, as mystics, want to relate to Divine Mother as a being who can manifest in many different forms, because that's exactly what she does. And so, you know, first she started to manifest in this kind of Adi Shakti cosmic being, but she would always, you know, take on a form. And then she took on the form of the green Tara. Also, you know, according to Buddhism, the green Tara is also the mother of humanity, the mother of all life. And so we kind of created these different images here to kind of depict the beautiful mother with her rainbow body. And so when she started to instruct us, she was explaining to us the process of planetary transformation that the world will go through in these years. And so the big year for this was, of course, 2020. 2020 was a breakthrough year where many people started to have multidimensional experiences. But actually, there was a very long preparation that led to 2020. For example, in 2012, we went through a cosmic event and this cosmic event, you know, of course, we call it ascension. But um, my guides, the way that they show it to me, I can show you here, actually. So the Hopi people, for example, that you might know, you know, as people who live in Arizona, they also are star beings who are not, again, on this planet right now. But they live in higher realms. And for example, one of the higher realms where they already live and exist and thrive is what we call the New Earth. And so some of us in this world, we have DNA that allows us to go to, for example, these higher realms at this moment, of course, eventually all of us. And so when you go, for example, to the new earth as a dimension that already exists, you will find many of these star nations that we knew as the native people who actually reside in this dimension. And so in 2006, 
I had this burning question. I started to hear people talk about ascension and, you know, suddenly the word was everywhere. And so I wanted to know, like, show me ascension, show me what is upon us. And so 2006, these beautiful guides, the Hopi people came to visit me and they said, well, to be able to see ascension, you have to step outside of this reality. You cannot see it in this world. This world is still within the illusion. You cannot see divine reality fully. And so for the first time that I know consciously, I was able to actually go through what we call really a stargate. And I know these days everybody talks about stargates, so it's nothing new. But for me, that was like, oh, my gosh, there are stargates within the field of the earth. And this is all really important to know. You know, the big picture is very big. Again, I'm just bringing a little piece here and there. And so hopefully it makes sense and fits somehow into the questions that you might have or the experiences that you are having or other people are having. And so going through the Stargate, which actually is a natural organic opening within the field of the earth, it is created like a flower within the field. Nobody builds it. It simply becomes itself through the flow of energy within the earth and within all her layers, which is also multidimensional layers of her being. So like Gaia has her higher self. So then it creates this beautiful expression of nature. And we move through this so-called stargate and we ended up in divine reality. Now, what does divine reality look like? Divine reality looks as if you entered cosmos without any filter of illusion. And then you get to see all the worlds upon the worlds that work with each other, that collaborate, all the beautiful groups of beings. You see planets that we didn't know existed. You see suns that we didn't know existed, or maybe we know. And so you start seeing through the eyes of your divine self in the divine reality. So I entered this beautiful divine reality guided by my guides and they stood beside me and we didn't go anywhere. We just stood right behind the stargate. And again, the question was, what is ascension? And so they point at cosmos, you know, at this level, you only speak telepathically. And in the cosmos, you had stars and galaxies and universes. And they are pointing at this amazing wave that is moving through cosmos and this wave totally looked like what the Aboriginal people call the rainbow serpent of creation. And, you know, I don't want to give it names and labels. I just want to describe it the way that I see it. And so we're looking at this amazing being, true consciousness, moving through what I would call a world. And again, I don't know the answer. Did this being move through the entire cosmos? I don't know. Did the being move through a universe? I don't know. But the being moved through many worlds and connected them into oneness. And so you saw this beautiful rainbow being that we would associate with the serpent of creation, moving through many worlds, many suns, and really connecting them into one. And then the cosmic moment came and we watched it with my guides and the being lifted up. And then every world within the body of this being lifted up. And the earth was one of the tiny little planets within the body of this cosmic serpent that lifted up. Now we're watching it, right? It's rising through cosmos and you see the stars and the galaxies and everything around. And it was like the most awesome cosmic shift. It was the shift that we associate with the shift of the ages, the shift of the eons. And so the earth was one of the little planets that was shifting with the big movement of this world. And as all worlds lifted up, they lifted up to higher state of being, higher dimensionality, higher expression of life. It was not just our planet, but it was all worlds lifting up now as we watched the beautiful rainbow serpent and she was i say she because to me it's an expression of divine mother she was moving higher through these worlds and as she was moving higher suddenly you could see her wings 
And so it was the feathered serpent. You know, we have so many mythologies talking about the feathered serpent. And we have to know this is not a myth. <laughs> beyond this illusion here, beyond the stargate, we can see the feathered serpent lifting up all worlds. And so many of you, of course, follow Patricia Codarobles. And so, you know, when the this world was left behind, and the other worlds then cannot really thrive to their fullness, right? Because all worlds in creation have to be able to make the shift of the ages. And so this time, the earth is making the shift of the ages. Now, this was amazing. So I'm looking at this and I see the serpent turning into this beautiful dragon. And then my guides explained to me, this is the cosmic DNA. Now, you know, I don't understand all the things at all, but, but I want to say the bigger the picture, the less we know, and that's okay. But we, again, just share what we know and what we see and what we, you know, uh, what comes through our divine self. And so I'm looking at this DNA and realizing that DNA is not just something that we have as a biological beings in our human body, but that DNA is something very cosmic, very ancient, and that it is a pattern of God within creation upon which creation then becomes it's all pattern and not just pattern of some information but it has you know so much more within itself and it's not only the dna that you and me share in these bodies but it's a dna that continues beyond this self so it was pretty incredible <clears throat> so you know this was in 2006 and so my life, you know, continued just doing a lot of meditation. And I went into three years of meditating for thousands of hours. I really just, you know, made time in my life. I stopped sleeping. I started to have these yogic states of consciousness. And the more I meditated, the more this illusion world disappeared. And the more the inner sight got completely focused in God consciousness. And I say God consciousness, divine consciousness, where suddenly the veil of illusion just ceased to exist in a way that was not confusing. It was kind of like gaining more insight all the time and becoming more multidimensional through meditation, just like our great gurus like Yogananda and all the other great avatars who came to this planet, simply following the very reliable process, step by step, meditate, 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 and then see what happens. And so what started to happen was big and then big and big. And then <clears throat> in the year 2009, when I completed my three years of intense meditation, you know, I was told then all the time what needs to be done on planet Earth. And one of the things I was told in 2010 was to support the work of Patricia Cota Robles. And so, for example, we started to produce videos for the World Congress on Illumination and having these big planetary events that support uh, the process of ascension. And so what is next for us? What is next for us is expansion. And this expansion is happening within you and me right now since 2018, kind of on steroids. It's so accelerated since 2018 and then 19. And what is happening every year then, now it's even bigger than ever before, but what happened in 2018, what happened in 2019 is that our divine self that in higher realms also has a code name that is Hercules. This divine self as this 12 dimensional being is downloading back into us like it was supposed to be. And so we are simply, in a way, ascending into more of you, more of us. And at the same time, we are dissolving the illusion of the lower human self that was only attached to body, to mind, to emotion, to kind of this very limited, limited perception of reality, including the five senses so you can think of ascension as your own massive expansion into what we call multi-dimensional being and again we will explain what that is and in all mystical traditions every mystical traditions in every mystical tradition the goal was always to achieve cosmic consciousness now cosmic consciousness is what is now really embodying into us 
And so as beings who thought that they were just human beings on this planet, we are actually expanding into so much more and also bigger perception, new DNA, new cellular information, new workings of the physical body as an instrument through which the divine self expresses itself into this world. And at the same time, expanding our nervous system to be able to perceive that which you truly are in all dimensions of your own being all the way to what we call godhead so again this all came from divine mother you know she was teaching me every single day and you know now it's just so much information it would be hard to share it in one event but i'll try to focus on what is still unfolding and what is still important so we are basically letting go of the limitations that actually came along with this fixation on the physical self like my body somehow is me then the mind going so much more into the divine mind instead of the instead of the third dimensional mind which was always based in duality always swinging from the good to bad from healthy to ill from rich to poor and so on and so on, we are coming so much more into the center of our being. And the center of our being is really important. The center of our being is all-encompassing love. All-encompassing love exists beyond all dualities. It is the love that we feel, for example, and again, Divine Mother taught me this, when we are in nature, and in nature, we don't judge ideally right we don't look at this tree and say this tree is ugly this tree is beautiful this tree is old this tree is young and full of life and so on and so on we just simply hopefully can become into perception of being and being one with and not having to label and judge we can just simply surrender in her arms into the arms of the mother and relax a little bit so all of this is happening to us through us we are letting go of the limitations of having to judge having to take sides and instead we are becoming so much more whole again we are also going through a very interesting process which is expanding our consciousness to realize that there are many more influences upon us and that not only are we human beings who live maybe in a home in a little town somewhere or in a city and maybe we are part of a community, but that we are also completely influenced by cosmos and all the layers of cosmos that influence our many bodies that we have. So we need to expand our consciousness to solar consciousness. We are expanding consciousness to galactic consciousness. We are expanding consciousness to universal consciousness. And then finally, we're expanding our consciousness to the infinite and that is cosmic consciousness. This doesn't mean necessarily that we start working with some beings from other dimensions and other star systems. They, of course, exist. Absolutely. The cosmos is filled with beings. But it's much more about our vastness, our unlimited perception of reality, our openness to divine consciousness. And so this actually, you know, Divine Mother, again, she always instructed, you know, how she wants certain graphics to be created. And this was one of them, how to expand a human being to be one with all. And as you know, being one with all is something that, for example, in Buddhism also is wonderful teaching that teaches us to cause no harm to any part of life. And so when we expand our being to be one with the earth, we no longer cause harm to any part of life. We become basically, I would say, uh, environmentally friendly. We become friendly with all creatures of this world, of course, including human beings. But we become the force of all love that is centered in the core of the being through which we emanate. So the basic principle of ascension is that we are becoming loving. And not just any kind of love, but all love. And again, we will have a video that we created with Patricia 
which is describing the process of ascension as a process that is planetary, but at the individual level, it's a process of expansion. And as you know, what expands us the most is love. It is hard to feel expanded if we are not feeling love. And so again, love is the path that we choose. It is the path of ascension. It is the path of expansion. When a human being can let go of the heavy weight of the illusion, we become so much more loving to all in a very unconditional way. And it's not about like having to, you know, love someone who's harming us. We actually gain immense power of true divine magnetism from within that then sets the tone to this reality. When a being becomes incredibly liberated from the illusion, which means there is nothing burdening them, they are fully free. Then the next ingredient that is essential is love. So you can think of liberation as the liberation of the mind, but also the liberation of the heart. And only then is the being fully one with the divine self. It is really a mixture of divine mind and divine love. So there are mystics in this world who follow the path of liberation through no thought. And of course, through meditation, you arrive in no thought. That's wonderful, but we need to add love to the mix. It is through love and complete silence within that we get to know the divine, hopefully, fully through our own being. So the combination of devotion and silence. So through meditation, when you meditate, you know, it's a good recipe to have is silent mind and a full heart. And then just the magic unfolds. And so our expansion is an expansion into this love, into this, in a way, complete oneness with God consciousness and to be also the force of all love that we associate with, for example, with Christ consciousness. So when we become like that, when we truly embody our original design and we express it into this world, then this world is filled with 8 billion people in love with life who honor life, who honor each other, who honor nature, who honor the elements, who honor the elementals, who honor also the bigger consciousness, which of course is what our ancient people always related to as galactic, galactic consciousness, universal and cosmic. And so our ascension here every day can be a very personal process, but at the same time, it's a very planetary process. And the reason for that is that this time the earth is not supposed to be left behind. Again, you know, our divine self will give us memories. And I always want to encourage everyone to work with our divine self rather than working, you know, externally, work internally with your divine self because the divine self has memories for you that will be useful for this lifetime. One of my memories that was given to me um, actually at the beginning of this process was the memory of the end of Atlantis, just the last day of Atlantis and how we made the promise, not just me, but many of you, if not all of you, to be here for this shift of the ages, 12,000 years later, so that the earth is not left behind. And so to be loving, to be conscious, to be filled with love light, to be filled with God essence, and whether we believe in God or not, it doesn't matter. It is truly within our anatomy. And I don't mean necessarily our physical anatomy, but our spiritual anatomy connects us to source light. And so when we allow the source light to flow through us at all times, all the time, 100%, not 99%, but every day, 100%, then we are making sure this world will not be left behind and that this world will choose a path and there are, there are choices to be made so part of this process too is making choices so i have a bunch of slides here but let's see what i have here um this is when you look at the fabric of reality many people have seen this before of course and so the fabric of reality is very interesting and i think this is more the fabric of divine reality Everything looks like an interconnected network, like an interconnected kind of spider web. And so every single one of us holds a little piece of this. 
as we come into consciousness of oneness, we realize our responsibility every day to actually have a very big ambition. And this to me is the most important thing. What is our ambition every day? The ambition cannot be to make money. The ambition cannot be to be successful, as well as the ambition cannot be anything else that would be at this physical level, except for can we be the greatest love this world has ever seen and make it your personal ambition to every day when you go outside and you connect with the earth because you are an expression of her here every day how can i be the greatest love this world has ever seen and when many of us have the same ambition i bet that we are making sure this world is on a great path, making great choices. So I'm going to take us a little bit about this Hercules. <laughs> so as we hold this little piece in this, you know, web of life, each one of us has such an amazing opportunity to make a difference at this personal and collective level at all times. It is all interconnected. You can see it. It's all interconnected. No doubt about it. When you meditate, you will see all of this. Maybe you've already seen it. And it gives us this amazing empowerment that every day of your life is making a difference in this big picture of this beautiful web of life. And that if you vibrate at the level of your highest love, then everyone around you in this web and also in this quantum field will benefit from someone like you. And so when I first started to really go, you know, consciously out of body all the time, I call it the controlled near-death experience in a way. It was really through the teachings of Yogananda that I learned how to do it. And so in teachings of Yogananda, Babaji, we call this the Kriya Yoga. And the Kriya Yoga, one of the, I would say, side effects that it has or maybe results is that you are able to completely withdraw all consciousness from the body through the nervous system and to enter higher realms at will and so when this started to happen to me through the teachings of yogananda his incredible support in this world i was able to see the 12 dimensional design of the human being that we would call the original design you could call it the divine self you could call it god's self you can call it the i am presence many different names for the same thing. And I was able to see that actually within us are 12 levels of consciousness and that when we are here in this world and you can call it third dimension or whatever we want to call it, then it's like existing on the third level of a very tall building. But if we only perceive the third level of this very tall building, we are not experiencing the wholeness of who we are. And so through this process of ascension, we are aligning with the four corners of our own sacred portal within the heart, which is part of our light body structure. And when we are able to do it through our practice, then the 12 levels of this being become fully available to us. And of course, it's like shifting gears in a massive way, right? Going from the third floor to actually all 12 floors at once. Now, when we do it through meditation and we do it through all the wonderful practices that we do, like the um, practices that we work with nature, we work with breath, we work with Qigong, we work with yoga and so on and so on, then we are able to perfectly manage this in a balanced way. And we are able to exist in this world as well as all other worlds simultaneously with full clarity, consciousness, and feel fully grounded in a most practical way. So some people ask me, that surely is not practical. <laughs> and I say, well, it is so practical to know thyself. And if you then want to limit focus in the third dimension and focus all your consciousness in here, it doesn't mean that you forget who you truly are. So it is very practical because it gives you wings and wings are important in this process. <laughs> So it gives you all that you are, and it gives you not only the knowing, so we call it self-realization, but also the tools 
and the tools are really important of course we want to be always consciously connected to the fullness of who we are so I first time tapped into this amazing consciousness through meditation around 2010 11 I don't know exactly when it was it lasted for three days and it was after I meditated simply you know one one afternoon you know I did what I always do sit down meditate and suddenly it broke through so I always want to encourage everyone to keep meditating keep doing the practices that you have because you can really break through and so this is also a really big part of our ascension to becoming all that you are we don't want to be just you know partially activated we want to be fully activated and then be in this world and do what needs to be done so in 2018, 2019, 2020, I started to experience a complete download. And I found this as a picture, so I think it's in Spanish. But don't read the words, just focus on the structure of this. I experienced every year in August, around the time of my birthday, which is uh, the Lion's Gate, I would experience the download, really download. I saw it come down as a huge structure that we call Chakana or the Inca cross and it would be this multi-dimensional indescribable structure of this you know you know whatever we want to call it cross and it came in rainbow light and it would download through the crown and it went into the heart and that it anchored in the body and then you know suddenly you have new new gifts suddenly you know so much more of who you are suddenly you have memories of lifetimes you never knew you had and so this is for all of us this is happening to all of us. And I think it happens always during the Lion's Gate. That's just my guess because it always does for many of us that I can tell. And so it's more like you would say that every year during this ascension process, the divine self is simply embodying more and more and more and more of its consciousness into this world. So in one way, we are ascending into the divine self but in another way, you could almost say that the divine self is descending these 12 aspects of its divinity into the being that we call you. And so again, this is a rainbow light. All our mystics always talked about the rainbow body. And the rainbow body is not just the rainbow body of, you know, the seven colors of the chakras. But it's a very multidimensional rainbow. It is most, well, best described by the beautiful gemstone, opal. And so when you look at the opal, that is basically the color of your divine self coming into this world. And in a way, also dissolving, dissolving the third dimensional self and uplifting us into more of this whole being. So that's pretty incredible. So in the... You know, and then we have the mythology of the 12 labors of Hercules. But, you know, mythology and all these stories, we always have to look beyond the story. The story is there to hide something and for the mystics to discover it through meditation. And so you have the 12 labors of Hercules and our divine self has 12 aspects of divinity. And each aspect has different quality. So it is up to us to actually embody each aspect equally through this being here into this world. So that's our ascension process. Another way to describe this, and this is from the mystical tradition um, of the teachings of the I am, the I am presence. And this came, this graphic from um, Elizabeth Clare Prophet. She wrote many books about the teachings of the I am. And so it's another way to look at it. Of course, here it gets a little confusing because your higher self looks like Jesus. And we could replace Jesus with any other being that fully embodied the Christ self. So, for example, we could say Krishna could be in the place of Jesus. And so we don't want to be just associating Christ consciousness with Jesus. But this, too, is a beautiful diagram of our ascension process. We are basically reconnecting this pillar of light through many layers of who we are all the way up to source to our god self and when this is reconnected within us 
then we receive completely different consciousness than ever before. Now, again, this is happening to all of us. And of course, as mystics, we support this process. We participate in the process. We let go of our illusion at the level of the human self. That's why this being here at the level of the human is surrounded by the violet light. The violet light is a transmuting light. It's the fire of God, the light of God that can transmute our illusion, that can transmute all the energies around us so that we can then dig through the layers right? And have the direct channel, not to any other being. I don't want my channel to be any other being. You only want to channel yourself. And I don't mean channel through some, you know, weird language. I mean, channel the energy of your true self into this world. That to me is what we are actually designed to be doing. To truly allow the umbilical cord between you and many of your higher selves to go directly to the source self, so that the source self can channel all the aspects of divinity down into us here and we express the 12 aspects of divinity. So it's pretty simple, right? But in the past, what happened is that the human being disconnected from the divine self and only very few managed to maintain this connection through a lot of mystical work, through a lot of meditation, through a lot of discipline. But now... This is all happening through all of us. And so because it's happening through you and me, every morning you have to ask, who am I today? <laughs> who am I? And the answer is becoming more and more and more audible, tangible, and something we can truly experience. And the answer is, I am. Now, this is really amazing. At the level of our God self, we become unchangeable, unchanging, eternal. And at that level of the divine self, we are one with, and you could say one with God, one with source. And yet we are individualized. Now, think about the beauty of your own design that is becoming so really available to all of us. It is the treasure that we hear about, for example, in the beautiful book, Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. That book touched so many millions of lives. And to me, the reason for that is because in the book, the guy goes around the world looking for a treasure and he then finds that the treasure was all along, I think below his bed or something or under his house. Well, the divine self is like that right now too. The divine self is a treasure and we have the treasure right here, right now, but we need to open the treasure. We need to look within the treasure. We are all holding the same treasure, every single one of us. And it truly is up to us to open it. And so again, through the different practices, we can open it. In this lunar cycle, normally we do new moon to full moon. This time it didn't work out because of travel and Thanksgiving, but tomorrow we will have an event and tomorrow is the full moon. It will happen kind of in the middle of the night, right? 26 to 27 of November, Sunday to Monday. And so tomorrow will be the full moon event. And during the full moon event, we will do meditation with the violet flame. We will do meditation for ascension. We will do some mantras. We will do some breathing. We will do some movement to truly step into the next lunar cycle once again, to move into more readiness more readiness and the more readiness will be preparing us for the winter solstice or in Australia, of course, summer solstice. So <clears throat> uh, the work with Orin, let me just address it for those of you who worked with us with Orin. So uh, on the website now, the foundation published, no one is allowed to share any teachings of Orin online except for the free audio. And so we can work with the free audios, but for everyone who wishes to create circles with friends and with students in person, they are welcome to do so as far as I understand it. And so we will tomorrow do a little bit of violet flame with Orin. And so this is, if you remember this image and you can even Google it, you know, this is the I am presence. This is so, so incredible. Because this is who we are becoming. 
we are simply reconnecting and that's why you would say people are awakening but really what is happening here people are awakening because the divine self is reconnecting and so every day we want to be filled with this God essence. We want to every day fill up with this milky white substance that you see that fills up the pillar of light. It is actually a real milky white substance. And when we every day open our hearts here, we let go of all burdens through the work, like the transmutation with the violet flame. And we realign structurally which means you know sitting upright or laying down completely straight allowing your spine to be the highway through which the light of god comes into this body then we can experience this wholeness of our own being which is of course our ascension now what happens to you and me when this reconnects something happens to the human in this world the human is completely transformed it happens instantaneously which is the most magical moment of course and it requires complete surrender now in that surrender this being here in this world starts actually speaking not in tongues but starts saying one interesting thing i am i am I am. Now, all the mystics experience exactly the same thing. And then they, you know, they have many different ways of describing it. And they say abiding in the I am presence, abiding in the I am, being one with God. But it's very interesting. At this level, we no longer say, I am a woman, I am a man, I am this, I am that. We simply self-realize without even choosing consciously. It's not like a choice that you start saying, oh, I am, I am, I am. It happens to us. It happens to everyone. <laughs> and so that's why we call it I am presence. Suddenly, the only thing that exists is you as your I am, unchanging, unchangeable. And yet in this body. So it's pretty interesting. And so to go a little bit more into what is happening here on this planet, when a being becomes truly the embodiment of their I am, you might start repeating just naturally, just because it just happens, it's automated. I am, I am, I am. And there's nothing else to it. There's no label, there's no preference, there is no consciousness of anything else but yourself as your God self. It completely changes the mind, it rewires the brain, it changes the nervous system, and you only have your consciousness as one with the divine, one with your God self, and not even you as a human being in this world, but you have much more constantly the experience of your 12-dimensional self. The other thing that can happen that you start repeating is, I am that I am, I am that I am, I am that I am. And again, there's nothing else to it. It simply is. So at that level, that is what we call liberation. It is truly, it's, and I recommend reminding yourself throughout the day, I am, I am that I am. It's a great tool to have. And so then you might start experiencing yourself in higher states of consciousness as a being that is in charge in a way of actually a planetary area on this planet and that you sponsor a certain planetary spot, and this is the way that I've seen it, is truly that these beings who embody so much light start in a way sponsoring and influencing whole areas of this planet. And of course, the great mystics knew that they can even influence planetary consciousness as a whole. And so think about your beautiful mission as you are ascending here, that not only is it very personal, but also it's very selfless, where you sponsor with your light so many. And it could be that you simply energize planetary consciousness so that she can once again belong where she belongs, and that is into higher realms of her true divine being and not to be part of this illusion. The entire cosmos is a dream. And it's a beautiful dream. It's a dream of God. It's God dreaming itself into being. So creation and the creator kind of are one at that level. But what happened here on this planet is that we kind of got a little trapped here for many, many thousands of years 
and if not longer. And so we started to go into what we call reincarnation. And reincarnation was a very unnatural way for a being to move through time and space and beyond time and space because it created simply a recycling system. And so in 2020, what happened is that the system was liberated from this trap. And so instead of reincarnating all the time into the same or similar conditions with a lot of karma, we now have achieved a state of liberation in the astral sphere of planet Earth. That too is a very huge, huge, huge success and change. And many of the great beings like Yogananda participated in this big transformation of the fourth dimension. So we might say, wow, this lifetime is completely different from anything else we have ever experienced. And in a way, we are on the path of ascension, which also is a path of liberation. Liberation from the dream within the dream. So if all of cosmos is one big hologram, you could say, of God's creation as cosmos, as a dream, then this world that we got used to, that we call here this world, planet Earth and the humanity, became trapped. And what was trapping us was this re recycling system and the fact that actually 8 billion of us forgot how creation really works. So we forgot that we are dreaming our lives into being. And so all of this is being liberated. We are truly liberating from illusion, from unconsciousness, from the old. And the old has been around for so long. We are clearing our DNA, not because we choose to or pay someone to do it. It's happening through these solar and galactic events. So we are truly going into more. Another thing that is happening within the earth herself is the balancing of forces within her. And again, here you see the rainbow serpent of creation at this kind of microcosmic level. The earth is very small compared to all the big systems that we are part of. And so we are balancing the forces of duality within the earth and we are balancing life force within the earth. We are again liberating life force to be in harmony in balance so that we are not part of a world that was out of balance which very much as you understood of course and as you know was part of the lopsidedness of the world the lopsidedness of the world meaning the tilt of the axis is something that we will speak about in the future again because that is still something that needs to be completed and it is completing little by little and it is visible to all the psychics and all the seers and that is that when we enter a world that was lopsided and we had the tilt of the axis, which was unnatural. It was caused by actually, let's call it interference of unconsciousness. And we became used to it, right? Everybody got used to it. The earth has a tilt. Of course, the earth has a tilt. But the thing is that if you have Gaia TV, for example, so Gaia TV, if you watch Gaia, they have amazing show, which is called Ancient Civilizations. And I think it was like two episodes before they actually had an episode about what happened 12,000 years ago on planet Earth. And they mentioned the axis of the world and how the axis of the world never used to have the tilt. That's a big, big story, right? We might think, oh, what's the, what's the big deal with the axis of the world? The thing is that there's a very good reason why every meditation teaching and every mystical tradition taught us to sit upright to align our own axis with true north to align our spine and nervous system and our brain straight so that we can perceive the divine reality which is actually cosmic consciousness and so as the world changes her axis the beings upon her to change their alignment and instead of having to work all life and many lifetimes and meditation Everything will become so much more natural, which means our divine nature will shine through us without having to work really hard on it. Because, you know, when you think about it, everything that we know in this world right now is always discipline, hard work, meditation to get somewhere where we have a little bit more consciousness. Well, when you have the original design of a human being that we talked about, 
where we shine the qualities of our divine self fully and completely into the world. There is no dysfunction. There is no distortion. There is nothing to fix. There is only your beauty to express. There is only your creativity to express. And so what we knew as our spiritual traditions, they were given to us to fix the problem of unconsciousness, of forgetting, of really misuse of life force. And so then we are actually perfect beings and we do have a purpose. And the purpose, it is to constantly express divine consciousness in, in new ways into the world where we are in. Isn't that beautiful? To me, like this is, you know, the huge thing about ascension is that no longer do we need to work on ourselves to be a little bit more, you know, responsible, <laughs> we're a little bit more harmonized. We are then the harmony of our true being. And when we are our true self, our divine self, our God self, there is no fixing to do. There is only expressing more and more and more of your divine consciousness into the world, creating more beauty, creating harmony. And it's just so beautiful. That's how it should be, right? And so again, that's part of our ascension process here. And so I'll quickly just mention a few things. Ascension process is actually a process in which humanity returns to the consciousness of divine mother divine mother was long forgotten in this world and even though we have wonderful religions and we have wonderful traditions that speak about maybe the divine father in wonderful ways they really forgot to speak about divine mother and divine mother is someone as a being that actually has come into this world she appeared to many and she will be appearing and making her presence known more and more and more but one thing that she does she right now surrounds us in all of nature and that is not some kind of imagination it's not a fairy tale the thing is that our mother in this world you can call her Gaia now Gaia in this world you would say is the consciousness of this planet but because our axis mundi broke axis mundi meaning the world axis the world axis didn't only go through the planet the world axis was an axis, a channel, just like you see here, a pillar of light that aligned Gaia with Sophia. Sophia, just another name for cosmic mother. We can call it many different names. Again, the names do not matter at all. But when the axis of a world is broken or tilted, just like you see in this picture, if you take this pillar of light and you make it lopsided, 23.5 degrees, nothing really flows. And so the same story for our beautiful planet. When Gaia's axis tilted, she lost connection with her higher and higher and higher self. And her highest self being Sophia. That's why we speak about Gaia Sophia. Her highest self being really Divine Mother. And so this process is the return of the mother. What it means within us, it's the return of love. And once again, love for all creatures, love for all nature, and not just love like I enjoy nature, but actually deep caring, deep caring for all life. And especially those who really need to be deeply cared for. Divine Mother always says, start with the weak ones. Don't start with the, those who are already strong and they're doing well. Start where you are most needed. Start with the weak ones, whether it is children, animals, elderly, whatever it is. It can be just service to love. And so what does it require? It requires quite a bit. And here you have a beautiful picture of, you know, Sophia holding the worlds around her. And that's one way to picture it. I like to show, you know, some imagery here. And that is that the earth is just one little planet in creation. And so it is important that the world aligns so that we can be one with all life, so that we can experience complete surrender to source. Surrender to source means living divine will. Living divine will. And divine will is not a personal will, not aligned with 
the larger will, the will of cosmos. And one way to understand divine will, just to simplify it, the will of God is always good. It is always love. It is always goodness. It never is suffering. It never is pain. It never is disease. All those are actually creations of someone completely different, different consciousness, but not the will of God. And so in this world, you know, a lot of teachings got very distorted, you know, and we cannot blame anyone for any distortions because it was not easy to maintain, maintain divine truth in this world. And so some teachings started to say, oh, yeah, suffering is meant to be this way and it's meant to be your karma and surely your karma created this disease. Well, that's not the will of God. The will of God is always goodness, love, thriving, perfect health, all the good things you can think about. That's the will of God. And so when the human being surrenders to this will, it is not out of weakness. It is actually an incredible strength. To surrender to the will of God, where you say, I so much trust this divine will. I surrender to it. And not like in a lazy way. You become moved by the will of God. You become an instrument, as Patricia says, to the will of God. And then you are the hands and the heart and the mind of God in this world. So I highly recommend some kind of surrender. Every mystical practice will tell you the same. And so we'll conclude in about five minutes. One thing that happened is we call it the fall of grace when the human heart, the portal of the heart actually got damaged. Not only do we have a heart chakra, but we also have a portal kind of like a stargate within our system. It is in our subtle body system. And this might sound strange, but when I started to have these, you know, different experiences in the higher realms and traveling through time and space and beyond time and space i visited the new earth where my family the hopi people which might be even your family of course they welcomed me and they explained to me a certain thing about the reality we still live in and one of the things that they told me which i still till this day find puzzling is that there were beings who interfered with the stargate of the human heart and today we might call these beings reptilians. And so that's exactly what they told me. And so, you know, not only did we end up in a world of illusion because, you know, maybe our own unconsciousness, but also there was a lot of interference that took place. And the interference at this level of the sacred heart. So it is right now our amazing call through this ascension process you know we are letting go of all the interference we are being liberated from many different things many different influences and one of them is the influence that actually influenced in this unfortunate way our own ability to love and so every day you know through our own feeling nature we are becoming more and more sensitive more and more and more open we really becoming beings of all love. And again, tomorrow we will continue with some invocation from Patricia about being all love. And so that kind of was the fall from grace. When beings shut their hearts, they also can then cause harm, right? It is only a being who doesn't feel that it can cause harm. A being who is so in love with life cannot cause any harm. And so, yes, we are becoming once again these beautiful, innocent beings that, you know, Uncle Jesus talked about. Be like children to enter the kingdom of heaven. And that means not to be exactly, you know, a child again, but to actually have a heart like an innocent child, unburdened child again. And so the other thing that is happening in this ascension process, you know, there's so much. I took little notes here and I thought there's no way we can talk about it in one hour. But the other thing is that our body is awakening to once again be a being of nature, once again be connected to life force. And so we can support this awakening of our body so that the body can channel the energies of our divine self. All of nature is again awakening so that we can become friends with nature, so that nature and all her beings, all the many beautiful elemental beings, see humanity again as friends and not as enemies. 
So once again, you know, the most wonderful teaching of Divine Mother that I received was the teaching about nature and how the nature that surrounds us is always a portal that is calling us to divinity, to recognize actually nature as divine, to recognize her elements and elementals as divine, to recognize all of creation as divine, of course, and to love all life, right? Beautiful. And so <clears throat> one of the practices I always share that I think is really, really important, our ascension process is a change of the electromagnetic field of the earth. You hear about it, I'm sure, all the time. I mean, everybody now talks about the Schumann resonances, about the electromagnetic field, about the rainbow body of the earth, about the shifting of North and South Pole, and all of that is part of our ascension. And one way that we can attune to this process at the physical level, but also consciousness level, is to every day, and I say for at least a few minutes, put your feet without socks, without shoes on the ground consciously and connect with the information of the earth so that your physicality can be attuned to the changing field so that the consciousness of your divine self can flow through you freely and that all that you are is available to you every day as it is changing every single day. Another thing that I learned from Divine Mother is that it is really important to every day attune to solar consciousness. Ideally, of course, to watch sunrise if possible. Sunrise brings amazing amount of codes. You are able to see them. You know, just open your third eye, focus on the sun as it rises and allow your seeing to bring the codes. And even if you don't see, just know there is information coming to you every day at sunrise. And every day is different information. It's almost like divine plan, right? It gets communicated to human beings and to the earth through sun. And so every day, if I should have two practices, it would be aligning with the earth and deep meditation, aligning with the sun and deep meditation, and then, of course, downloading your divine self so that you have as much of yourself available to you. And so with that, you know, we are in this amazing process, and I don't want to make this event too long. So I would say planetary ascension is a very complex process. And one of the things that are really changing is the alignment of the planetary axis, is our electromagnetic field, is the consciousness of every single one of us as we download our divine self. It's the body that is able to now actually channel your divine self in more and more profound ways, making the consciousness of the God self, the I am, available to every single one of us in every moment more and more and more and so once again thank you for being here on this planet thank you for holding this light like you see here in this picture think of yourself that way and hopefully that empowers everyone to every day just remember a few of these things and just to chant often i am i am i am and allow it to liberate your being from anything else and just going into that simplicity of I am. And so tomorrow we will have uh, two events. It's just we do it for the different time zones. It's going to be at 11 a.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Pacific. And we will have an event that will be much more about meditating, chanting, breathing, and just practicing these different conscious practices to expand. So thank you so much and so much love.